BMW's G60 8th generation 5 series has changed, but not beyond recognition. The looks get sharpened, there's enhanced cabin media tech, engine electrification now proliferates, and an all new full EV variant joins the range. Otherwise, the lineup continues with much the same polished, Teutonic, and mildly dynamic appeal as before. How do you write a bestseller? Well, this eighth generation G60 era 5 Series is BMW's answer to that question when it comes to the Munich Maker's uber successful offering in the full executive segment. Its G30 predecessor was the biggest selling 5 Series design to date, this model line's lineage dating all the way back to 1972. It's never looked quite like this though, or been quite like this beneath the skin. Diesels have been dumped, there's just one single variant you can't plug in, and a huge proportion of sales will be accounted for by this all-electric version, the i5, the very first 5 Series EV. There are, of course, more familiar elements to this Mark 8 design, a developed version of the old car's cluster architecture, or CLAR platform, the curved screen cabin tech we now see in all new BMWs, and the car rolls out of the same German Dingolfing factory as its predecessor. Its role, though, is to prepare us for a very different 5 Series future. But can it blend the technology of that future with the involving 5 Series DNA of the past? And would you want to pay the exalted price that's now being asked for this car if it did? Both good questions. You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to answer them. So what might be in store here? After all, never has BMW's core mid-sized executive model been so radically changed from one generation to the next. This eighth generation G60 5 Series can still be had with combustion power, but it's arguably going to be defined by the fact that it's the first five to be offered in full electric form. So it's that i5 variant that we've chosen to try today. This car, and to some extent the alternative PHEV variants that make up much of the range alongside it, get BMW's latest E-Drive battery tech, but that means weight and lots of it, something usually a sweet handling sports saloon would want to avoid. The 5 Series has traditionally built its reputation on just that, an attribute that with this G60 model is going to be tested as never before. For BMW, maintaining that reputation is crucial. Where other full executive saloons and estates in this segment are essentially downsized luxury saloons from the class above, the 5 Series has throughout its history mostly stood apart as a slightly more dynamic choice. Not all generations of 5 have fully lived up to this ideal. The pre-2016 F10 generation Mark VI design springs to mind but this current model's G30 predecessor offered a welcome return to form thanks to the adoption of a stiffer, aluminium-rich CLAR platform that was apparently developed with this electrically orientated G60 model in mind. Hence, that platform's retention in updated form for this Mark 8 design. Perhaps that's why, despite the fundamental drivetrain changes, you might well feel a sense of welcome familiarity in the first few miles at the wheel of this car if you happen to be graduating on from the previous version. Pleasingly, it really does drive like a 5 Series, albeit a slightly larger, heavier one. The steering and suspension don't isolate you from the road as they do in other similarly sized EV and combustion segment competitors. Plus, there's a nicely linear feeling throttle, natural feeling brakes, and the car attacks a series of turns with better poise and balance than any current mid-sized executive sports saloon we can remember trying. Which, given the prodigious 2,130 kilogram curb weight, 
of the i5 E-Drive 40 variant that many will want is mightily impressive. That model is the core electric variant, rear driven with 340 horsepower and good for 62 miles an hour in six seconds on the way to 119 miles an hour. As might be expected, it's a drivetrain borrowed from the only slightly smaller i4 rather than the rather larger i7, as is the 81.2 kilowatt hour battery, good in the E-Drive 40 for a claimed range of 356 miles. As in the i4, the more powerful EV alternative is the i5 M60 X-Drive variant we're trying here, which couples its stablemate's rear motor with an additional one at the front, creating all-wheel drive and a combined output of 601 horsepower, which means 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds, en route to 142 miles an hour. The extra motor's added 175 kilograms of weight drops the EV range to 315 miles. We mentioned earlier that there were still some combustion-powered 5 Series alternatives. If you need to go electric but aren't quite ready for a full EV, then you can choose between a couple of plug-in hybrids. The rear-driven 530e S-Drive with 299 horsepower and the four-wheel drive 550e X-Drive with 489 horsepower. Both use a larger 19.4 kilowatt hour battery than their previous generation counterparts, allowing the 530e to go up to 63 miles on battery power. It's up to 56 miles for the 550e. The only variant that doesn't require a plug to maximise its efficiency returns is the entry-level 520i S-Drive. If cost or circumstance limit your 5 Series choice to that base version, then worry not. With 425 kilos less weight than this i5, the 520i S-Drive has an agility the more expensive versions lack. Arguably, it represents the sweet spot in the range. In this form, the G60 runs the latest version of the brand's 2.0-litre, four-cylinder, 48-volt mild hybrid petrol engine driving the rear wheels. An X-Drive version is factory-made too, but wasn't available in the UK from launch. There's 208 horsepower on tap, which means 62 miles an hour, in 7.5 seconds en route to 143 miles an hour. Of the diesel power that sustained this model line for the last two decades, there is now no sign, although it's still offered in other markets. Across the 5 Series range, passive M suspension is the standard ride setup, which as the name suggests is the firm-ish sort, in keeping with this model's driver-orientated vibe. If you've liked 5 Series models of the past, you'll be okay with it, but if you prefer to be cosseted, as in a rival Audi or Mercedes, then you might not. You can option the standard system up to adaptive professional suspension status, which gives you adaptive dampers and rear wheel turning integral active steering. The top setup fitted only to this i5 M60 is Adaptive M Professional, which combines these features with active roll stabilization. In regular driving, there are a few things you'll notice. You can't throw it into corners with quite as much abandon as the old G30 version. That extra weight has to tell somewhere. But turn-ins precise and once you're in the bend, there's great balance and impressive traction on the way out. On narrower roads, you might not feel quite as able to enjoy all of this as with 5 Series models past, because this now feels like a significantly larger car. Though on fast flowing curves or more open roads, it's impressive at disguising its size, particularly if you've got the active steering tech fitted as here. Steering feel with either kind of rack doesn't seem particularly natural, but there's significantly more cornering feedback than you'd get from obvious rivals. What else might you need to know? Well, there are drive modes, of course, though not all of the offered My Mode settings have much to do with driving. Choose from personal, sport, efficient, relaxed, expressive and digital art. For this i5, there's also a Hans Zimmer curated Iconic Sound Driveline soundtrack and screen selectable energy recovery settings, though it's easiest simply to leave the system in its automatic adaptive mode. This i5 M60 also gains a boost function, operable via this red highlighted left-hand steering wheel paddle. Pull it back for maximum thrust, at which point the dash lights up, the soundtrack goes spooky, and you're simply hurled at the horizon. 
in any five, get on the highway and the luxury move up market is evidenced by exemplary refinement, common even to the combustion versions. It's really not that much different to the 7 Series in this respect, which is high praise indeed. Also shared with the 7 is a new level of drive assist tech. BMW is particularly proud of its highway assistant, which basically reassigns your role at the wheel from driver to supervisor and combines adaptive cruise control with active lane keeping aids, speed limit assist and an active lane change assistant. All of this means that a cruise that you don't have to touch the wheel, though cabin cameras will ensure that you are keeping your eyes on the road. What was once marketed in its class as the ultimate driving machine has come to this, but thankfully something of that old dynamic still remains. This is a meaner, leaner, more muscular kind of 5 Series and this 8th generation G60 model has grown in every direction. 93 millimetres longer, 35 wider and 24 taller, which means it's the first 5 Series over 5 metres long and the first over 1.5 metres high. This saloon is of course joined by a touring estate version. Both body styles share what the brand calls a clear reduced design language and athletic proportions. The side profile showcases this G60 design's elongated proportions, long bonnet, steeply sloping A-pillar and gently flowing roof line towards the rear. There's a high shoulder line, powerfully modelled surfaces and two precisely drawn character lines. Gloss black sills and lower body trims are there to try and reduce the visible body mass. And here's a nice touch, the counterswing at the base of the C-pillar, known as the Hofmeister Kink, is highlighted by a graphic element with the number 5 embossed on the side window surround. Traditional door handles have made way for flush fitting ones, and these, along with a flat underbody, explain an impressively sleek drag factor of up to 0.22 CD. The now sleeker wheel rims are between 19 and 21 inches in size. We've got M aerodynamic style 20 inch alloys here. Do you like this shark nose front? It still incorporates a kidney grill, even though it isn't needed on this i5 where it's blanked off. Possibly because BMW wants to retain the iconic glow option of illuminating this appendage on pricier models like this one. This appendage is flanked by adaptive LED headlamps with matrix high beams and daytime driving light and turn indicator functions generated by two nearly vertical incorporated LED elements. A recessed BMW roundel sits between twin bonnet creases that flow into the centre of the grille and lower down there's an angled lower intake flanked by corner cutouts. These work with the integrated air curtain system which helps this Mark 8 model achieve a sleek CD value of 0.23. At the back, the shoulder and roof lines flow harmoniously into the contours of the lights. And these flat rear lamps interpret the brand's usual L shape with four narrow horizontally aligned LED strips generating the lighting functions divided by an L-shaped chrome strip. This M60 version looks a bit meaner thanks to this ribbed lower black diffuser. And this particular car has been fitted with the optional M carbon exterior package, hence the trimming on this subtle spoiler, which is extended into the door mirrors. Right, time to take a look inside. Now there's a rather smart stitched key, but as long as your 5 has the comfort access function fitted, you won't need it because you can gain access via your Apple or Android smartphone or even your Apple Watch. With this, using security-optimised ultra-wideband technology, approaching or moving away from the car triggers locking or unlocking and your device can stay in your pocket. Plus, this digital key plus access can be shared with up to five other users. Once inside, there's no doubting that you're in a new, more luxurious Generation 5 Series, and not only because of the operating system 8.5 curved screens that dominate the cabin. 
Around the triple layer dashboard, much is borrowed from the larger seven, including this BMW interaction bar, an ambient lighting strip across the fascia that wraps around into the doors. You're surrounded by stitched Veganza leather and exquisite detail touches like intricate speaker grills and secondary controls that can be fashioned from cut glass. But it's not an interior likely to please a traditionalist. Technology dictates form, function, colour and ambience. Still, if you're ready for a new approach to luxury, you might like it very much. Though unlike Tesla, BMW continues to think you require a gear selector and column stalks, you're still going to need to be ready for something different. Physical switch gear has been largely banished, and at first glance, even conventional air vents appear to be missing, replaced by invisible seam vents with breeze volume operated by touch-sensitive sliders. That interaction bar will be a real talking point. Top models get it with this crystalline finish, and beyond just being pretty, it also illustrates key functions, an incoming call, for instance, or glowing red with the car's safe exit system if you're about to open the door in front of another vehicle. The interaction bar also houses touch-sensitive controls for the glove box, the ventilation and the hazard warning flashes. A key physical control BMW thankfully has retained is the rotary iDrive controller for this centre screen which sits on this lower centre console panel above two key buttons, one for the My Mode drive settings, the other a shortcut to three categories of regularly used features, driver assistance, drivetrain and chassis, and if you've an i5, charging. As long as you don't mind all the interactive tech, the ergonomics are difficult to fault, and the redesigned and very supportive seats place you perfectly in front of the curiously shaped flat-bottomed M leather wheel. There are extra nice touches too. You can now individually regulate the temperature in the front foot wells and the small sunroof of the old model has been replaced by this optional panoramic glass top which is nearly 90% bigger. Right, what about that curved display setup we mentioned? Part of the brand's advanced BMW Live Cockpit Professional Media Package. The 12.3-inch instrument display part of it showcases sophisticated graphics and along the bottom of the screen are key items of data, range, temperature, gear selection, the speed limit, time and if you've an i5, battery percentage. Speed is displayed digitally in the main part of the display and in the main part of the screen to the right of this slashed section is a content section which you populate by selecting the content menu via this cog switch on the right-hand steering wheel spoke. Choose between journey data, assisted view, augmented view, range preview, a map, a G-meter, and media and radio selections. If you've a head-up display fitted, as we have here, all of this will be complemented by further customizable settings for that. There's a choice of standard view, directional view, assisted view, sport view, or reduced view options, all with speed sign recognition. Anything the instrument screen can't tell you, and much that it can, will be found on the joined-in left-hand part of the curved display, a 14.9-inch centre dash control display. It likes to showcase BMW mapping, and its built-in intelligent personal assistant constantly wants to tell you how clever it is. But all kinds of other functions can be prioritised to take up the main part of the screen surface. Nearly all the car's climate functions have been inhaled by this screen and sit in a very detailed climate menu but you can access them quite easily via temperature controllers which display permanently in each corner of the monitor's bottom frame. Between them are rather small shortcut options for music, navigation, fan speed and phone, plus an apps option that takes you through to a home screen full of tiny icons. Segment customers will be used to accessing features like Alexa, Spotify, the weather, news podcasts from screens like this, but this one can also connect you into YouTube. An interior camera and an air console system with arcade games you'd play by connecting up a couple of phone handsets. The these days expected wirelessly accessible Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is of course built in, as is a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, ideal for TikTok-obsessed teenagers. But bear in mind that many of the digital services are life-limited before becoming chargeable. Quite a few features require access via a BMW ID, which you'll already have if you're using the provided My BMW app, 
and which you can add to any designated smartphone, so personal interior settings and activated features can be instantly communicated to the car whenever you're driving it. You can add to that menu of features in the course of your ownership life, thanks to over-the-air updates and extra tech that can be purchased via the online Connected Drive BMW shop. Audio files are served by a standard 16-speaker Harman Kardon system with the excellent 18-speaker 655-watt Bowers & Wilkins surround sound setup we've been trying here, available further up the range. For those unlike cars that can get to grips with it, there's also a gesture control system available for main screen functions. All this technology is impressive, but you might find yourself getting irritated by some of the buried screen menu functions and wishing sometimes for the instant accessibility of old-fashioned switches and buttons. Plus, after living with the car for a bit, you might begin to notice that not all of its cabin quality is quite as premium as BMW wants you to think. The rubber directional toggles for the air vents below the centre of the fascia feel a little cheap, as does the rubberised surface for the over-prominent double wireless charging mat ahead of the centre console. Plus, the illuminated door pockets come unlined, so your keys will slide about, and the plastics used on either side of the centre tunnel are of the hard, unyielding kind. None of this would matter much if this was still a £40,000 car, but because most versions of it will sell for nearly double that, it very much does. Having said that, this i5 seems far better built than an equivalent Mercedes EQE with the creaks and occasional rattles you sometimes get in that car, noticeable by their absence. What else? Well, despite the fact that pleasingly, given the kind of car this wants to be, you sit quite low, much lower than in a rival Mercedes E-Class or EQE. Front and side visibility is fine, helped by slender front pillars and a wide, tall windscreen. Your over-the-shoulder view isn't quite as good, but it is better than it is in a rival Mercedes E-Class and is aided by BMW's now familiar reversing assistant, which can automatically reverse out of a space using the same trajectory you use when entering it. All of which can be supplemented by an excellent surround view camera system. When it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Both the door bins and the glove box are averagely sized, and the centre console has a pair of ambient lighting framed cup holders, though they can't warm or cool your drink like the ones in an X7. Twin USB-C ports are nearby, the big twin-lidded bin between the seats has a 12-volt socket, and there are ticket clips in the sun visors, though no overhead glasses compartment. OK, time to take a look in the rear. And for this Mark 8 design, BMW's added 20 millimetres extra length to the wheelbase, which has freed up a little extra back seat space. Which is something you notice once you get comfortable back here. There's a bit more room for your legs than you get in a comparable E-Class, but you can forget taking a comfortably placed third centre seated adult because of this huge centre tunnel, which looks incongruous in this i5 version, given that its Mercedes EQE equivalent has a completely flat floor. Above the tunnel can sit these controls for the four-zone climate system, though you do have to pay extra for those, with two USB-C ports above and a small compartment below. Neat little touches include the airbags built into these rear pillars, and as expected, there are overhead lights, grab handles with coat hooks, reasonable door pockets and cup holders reside in this centre armrest. Extra cost features fitted here include rear seat heating, side window blinds, travel and comfort system seat back attachments with integrated USB-C ports, and the huge, intricately crafted silver speakers of the aforementioned Bowers & Wilkins audio system. Headroom isn't much affected by the extra cost panoramic glass roof, which has a length of 841 millimetres and a width of 818 and is particularly effective at lightening the ambience here in the rear. OK, let's finish with a look in the cargo bay that on this saloon model will be accessed by this power-operated boot lid if you've ticked the right option box. 
This i5 model offers 490 litres of space. That's 80 litres more than the two plug-in hybrid versions, restricted by their underfloor battery pack, but you'll get 520 litres if you choose the 520i. Here, it's a usable space into which around eight carry-on cases will fit, one less than you'd get in an E-Class. There's not much room beneath the floor, but you'd easily fit the charging leads in there, which is just as well because unlike with some other EVs, there's no space for these beneath the bonnet. Two chunky bag hooks feature by the boot hinges, and there are four floor tie-down points. The cargo area ceiling is painted metal, which isn't very premium, which is where you'll find the catches for the seat back, which conveniently folds in a 40-20-40 split. Get ready for quite an increase over previous 5 Series prices. From launch and at the time of this test in early 2024, BMW was asking £51,000 for the only non-plug-in model, the entry-level 520i S-Drive. You'll need well over 74000 for the i5 E-Drive 40 and nearly £98,000 for this i5 M60 X-Drive version. The 530e S-Drive rear-driven PHEV prices from around £60,000, while the 550e X-Drive all-wheel drive PHEV is pitched from just over £76,500. All the prices quoted are for this saloon body shape. At the time of this test, in early 2024, BMW was just about to launch the alternative touring estate body style. What about trim? Well, for the 520i, the i5 eDrive 40 and the PHEVs, the default spec level is now M Sport. BMW having realised that most customers previously upgraded to this trim level anyway. If you want more, there's an M Sport Pro trim option for £3,000 more. And this i5 M60 comes only in a top M performance level of spec. How does the pricing here place this car in its segment? Well, let's start with the combustion variants and the way they compare to key competing Mercedes models. The 520i S-Drive manages to undercut its arch rival, the Mercedes E200, by around £4,000 on price, at the same time as being cheaper to run. The 530e PHEV undercuts a rival Mercedes E300e by around £8,000, but isn't quite as efficient. Want an EV? Well, the i5 eDrive 40 would save you around £3,000 on a comparable powerful Mercedes EQE 350 and has a useful slug more power, but will take you around 20 miles less on each charge. This top i5 M60 looks a much better bet than a rival Mercedes AMG EQE 53, saving around £17,000 and going around 25 miles further on each charge. Those are your main comparisons. The new sixth generation version of this BMW's other main Teutonic rival, the Audi A6, hadn't been launched at the time of this test in early 2024. As you might expect, the Combustion 40 TFSI version of its Mark V predecessor undercuts a base five by quite a lot, though the TFSIE PHEV version doesn't. Other cheaper ageing contenders you probably won't take long in dismissing if you're looking at a 520i S-Drive include the Lexus ES, a self-charging full hybrid, and still on sale at the time of this test, the base P250 version of Jaguar's XF. There's also the conventional 2.5-litre petrol version of the Genesis G80, a car that in its electrified EV form might be a bit left-field alternative to an i5 e-drive 40. After all, for around £70,000, it offers more power than the BMW and drive to all four wheels, but nothing like the driver involvement. But let's assume it's a 5 Series you really want. If so, then you're going to need to know just how generous Beamer has been with standard spec. So let's look at that now. The brand has tried to make it more straightforward to spec your car this time round. Now, assuming you want a mainstream model, you decide on your powertrain, mild hybrid, PHEV or EV, then pick between M Sport or M Sport Pro trim. Then select between five preset option packs, the Tech Pack or Tech Plus Pack, the Comfort or Comfort Plus Pack, or if you want everything, the ultimate pack. Now finally, there are 10 individual options to select from, and that's it, done. 
BMW doesn't have to offer lots of extras because the two standard trim levels are pretty well kitted out, as you'd hope they would be for the money. M Sport gets you 19-inch M Lite double-spoke bicolour alloy wheels and an M Sport exterior styling pack with M Black high gloss shadow line trim. You also get passive M Sport suspension, M Sport brakes with blue calipers, launch control and adaptive LED headlights with a high beam assistant. And there are drive modes of course, BMW calls them my modes, personal, sport, efficient, relaxed, expressive and digital art. They can be used to activate settings for the drive, suspension, displays and interior lighting including the BMW interaction bar, all to suit your personal preferences. As you'd expect, you also get, as standard, all the usual executive niceties. There's power folding mirrors, LED tail lamps, all-round sensors, a reversing camera, a parking assistant, which can automatically slot the car into spaces, and the BMW digital key that allows you to open the car with your phone. As usual with BMWs, there's also a reversing assistant that enables automated reversing in narrow environments like multi-storey car parks. It stores the steering movements when driven forwards at up to 22 miles an hour, which the system can then repeat in reverse for up to 50 metres. Inside, the standout feature is the BMW Interaction Bar, which stretches across the fascia and illuminates in various colours to brighten the cabin and issue drive warnings. You get upholstery in a combination of Alcantara and Viganza leather, and the front sport seats have heating and lumbar support. There's an M leather steering wheel and an M anthracite headliner, plus two zone automatic air conditioning and split folding rear seats. As for MediaTek, the standard live cockpit plus package pairs a 12.3 inch digital instrument display with a 14.9 inch central control display in the center of the fascia. Built into the latter is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto cloud-based navigation with BMW Maps, intelligent personal assistant, voice control and a 12 speaker. 205 watt Harman Kardon surround sound audio system. Plus, you get the brand's connected package professional suite of features, including concierge services, connected music, connected parking, in car experiences, real time traffic information, and remote services. Not all of these features are available without future subscription charges. Uh, you can even use the center screen for in car gaming. It connects with an air console system and players smartphones act as controllers with the connection established by scanning a QR code on the curved display. Talking of being connected, all five series owners will be offered use of a clever My BMW app that can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar and even prompt when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. It even has a share live trip status feature that allows the driver to share their current location and time of arrival with business partners, friends or family. Is it worth upgrading to M Sport Pro spec? Well, maybe if you want your 5 to have a sportier look and feel. With this, you get larger 20-inch M Lite star spoke bicolor jet black wheels with red calipers, M Lite shadow line trim and an M rear spoiler. Plus, the grille is illuminated with the iconic glow exterior package. For the cabin, there are welcome light puddle lamps, M seat belts and a wireless smartphone charging tray. As mentioned earlier, this i5 M60 xDrive model has its own bespoke M performance level of trim, largely based on M Sport Pro spec, but with a few updates. You get adaptive suspension professional, adaptive damping, and rear wheel turning integral active steering, and the BMW Iconic Sounds electric drive sound package. The 20 inch wheels are of the M aerodynamic style, and there are high gloss black M mirror caps and sun protection glass. Inside, the M leather steering wheel has a red accent and you get stainless steel look, M pedal covers and an M anthracite headliner. Plus, there's four zone automatic air conditioning and a crystalline glass look.
for the BMW Interaction Bar. Back to the standard range and onto options. Most customers will want to add in one of the available extra cost packs we mentioned earlier. Now we said there were five of these. Most will want the comfort pack, which gives you comfort access, keyless entry, a powered boot lid, a heated steering wheel, and the brand's travel and comfort system, which gives you attachment points on the front seat backs. The Comfort Plus pack includes all that, plus more supportive power adjustable front comfort seats with power adjustment and cooled ventilation, rear seat heating and four zone air conditioning with rear seat controls. As for the technology pack, well that gives you a head up display, natural interaction gesture control for the centre screen, an interior camera you can use to take cabin pictures and aid security, and the Parking Assistant Plus setup, which gives you a 360 degree surround view camera and can project a live image on your smartphone as part of an anti-theft recorder that allows you to monitor the car remotely when you're away from it. If your 5 is already fitted with one of the comfort packs, you'll also be offered an upgrade to the Technology Plus pack, which adds to the Technology Pack features with a Parking Assistant Professional package that memorises parking space manoeuvres and can allow you to park the car with your phone while standing outside it. The Technology Plus Pack also includes the extra autonomous drive and camera drive assist features of the brand's Driving Assistant Professional Pack, which I'll cover off for you in a moment. The final optional package, the Ultimate Pack, is limited to this i5 M60 model and includes, well, just about everything. The main feature is Adaptive M Suspension Professional, which adds active roll stabilisation, deploying 48 volt electric swivel motors to ensure particularly fast and precise compensation of lateral inclination forces through tight bends. Otherwise, it's just the entire contents of all the four option packs just mentioned, plus crystal-like crafted clarity interior controls. For a little extra, you can add softer BMW individual merino leather upholstery as well. Now back to the standard range, we mentioned there were some individual options. You can add a panoramic glass roof that's almost 90% bigger than the sunroof in the previous generation model. Plus there are roller sun blinds, an 18 speaker 655 watt Bowers and Wilkins surround sound audio system and the crystal light crafted clarity interior controls that I just mentioned. Plus you can add sun protection glass and comfort access keyless entry if your chosen 5 doesn't already have these features. On the 530e PHEV you can also add the Adaptive Suspension Professional Pack which gives you adaptive dampers and rear wheel turning integral active steering. The PHEV models can also be fitted with a Mode 2 flexible charger and across the range you can add a tow bar which can tow along up to 610 kilograms in an i5 or up to 2000 kilos in a combustion model. With M Sport Pro Spec, you can add an M Carbon exterior package. Right, let's finish with a look at safety. Now, all fives get the brand's driving assistant pack, which includes a more advanced version of the brand's usual front collision warning autonomous braking system. When turning left, this now includes detection of oncoming traffic and pedestrians or cyclists. There's also a lane departure warning system with active lane return, plus a lane change warning setup and a rear crossing traffic warning system with a braking function. Other driving assistant pack features include rear collision warning, an evasion assistant, crossroads warning with brake intervention and exit warning, the latter alerting occupants about to open their doors in the face of an oncoming vehicle or cyclist. If you're looking for a degree of level 2 autonomous drive tech in your 5, you'll need to have specified the Technology Plus Pack with its driving assistant professional features. These include distance control with a stop and go function and BMW steering and lane controller assistant. The driving assistant professional portfolio also includes an augmented reality representation of the vehicle on the cockpit display and some extra active safety camera features, side collision protection with active return, road priority warning and wrong way warning, a crossing traffic warning system for the front of the car 
and BMW's emergency lane assistant and emergency stop assist functions, which can bring the car to a controlled stop if you're taken ill at the wheel. At some point in the production run, BMW apparently will also introduce a particularly clever active lane change assistant, which can be controlled by eye activation. The vehicle suggests a lane change, which the driver confirms by looking in the exterior mirror. For sure, it was brave of BMW not to offer its three litre mild hybrid diesel engine in this car, given that diesel power has been far and away the preferred choice of customers in the last two generations of 5 Series. Still, the Bavarian brand is determined to move into this new electrified era. And if you can't afford or don't want to go along with the Bavarian Mark's insistence that you should now be looking to plug your 5 Series in, then you'll be directed to the entry-level 520i S-Drive petrol model. This is also electrified, but only very lightly via a 48-volt mild hybrid system that uses a crankshaft generator and recuperates energy during overrun and braking, storing it in a little 48-volt battery that supplies the vehicle's 12-volt electrical system, runs the start-stop setup and lightly boosts mid-range acceleration. It's a common kind of layout in this segment, but seems to work a bit better here than it does in a rival Mercedes E200. This BMW's figures being 48.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 132 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's about 4 miles and 14 grams per kilometre better than the E-Class. Otherwise, plug-in power rules the day here. For all the fanfare given to the i5 EV variant we're trying here, we can't help wondering whether right here, right now, a better option for many customers might be one of the two plug-in hybrid 5s, particularly now that they use a much larger 19.4 kilowatt hour battery that's boosted EV range so considerably. You're looking at up to 63.4 miles for the 530e S-Drive and up to 55.9 miles for the 550e X-Drive, which means that unlike previous 5 Series PHEV models, in owning one of these, you won't simply be using the drive battery as part of a medium-length journey. You'll very likely be using EV drive for all of it. It's the 530e most will want, which is combined cycle rated at up to 470.8 mpg and CO2 rated at up to 14 grams per kilometre. Those figures aren't quite as good as those of a rival E300e, but they do get pretty close. For real efficiency, of course, BMW wants you to go all electric with the i5 full EV variant we're testing here. Both derivatives use the same 81.2 kilowatt hour battery, quite a lot smaller than the 101.7 kilowatt hour battery used in the larger i7, with the volume rear driven E Drive 40 version rated at 356 miles between charges, while this all wheel drive M60 X Drive version manages 316 miles. Both figures are fractionally better than you'd get from the Mercedes EQE equivalent models. The other thing we should point out, which applies to both i5s, is that should your remaining battery charge be insufficient to reach your destination, there's a get-out clause in the form of a screen-selectable max range feature that's available when the efficiency drive mode is selected. This increases potential mileage by between 15 and 25%, but you won't want to use it unless absolutely necessary because it virtually disables the climate system and, more seriously, if you've motorway miles to do, limits the car to 60 miles an hour. BMW certainly worked hard here at achieving EV parity with Mercedes. The ultra-slim high-voltage battery is heated using a dedicated electric flow heater, and there's a standard heat pump which draws heat from the ambient air so the climate system fan doesn't have to generate it. As you'd expect from a sophisticated EV, there are selectable levels of energy recovery to replenish battery power when braking or off-throttle, but most of the time you'll probably prefer to leave the car in its automatic adaptive recuperation setting. This has been further honed for the i5 
and is now able to take downhill sections and information from the traffic light recognition function into account. Adaptive recuperation generally allows the intensity of brake energy regeneration during overrun and braking to be automatically optimised for the road situation, as detected using data from the navigation setup and the driver assistance system sensors. When approaching a junction, for example, the level of recuperation can be increased even if route guidance isn't activated, thereby feeding energy back into the battery while harnessing the deceleration effect at the same time. On the open road, the coasting function can take over, allowing the car to freewheel with no drive power whenever the driver eases off the accelerator. What about charging? Something you control either via the BMW app or a dedicated charging section of the centre screen, via which you can activate charging modes and location-based charging settings, set charging targets and the AC limit, activate a departure plan and precondition the battery. Like Mercedes, BMW remains committed to a 400 volt electrical infrastructure for its EVs, unlike the more modern 800 volt system you'd find in a comparable Genesis G80 electrified or a not much pricier Porsche Taycan or Audi e-tron GT. All those models, as a result, able to use the new generation of ultra-fast public DC charging stations where they can charge at up to 350 kilowatts. This i5 is limited to 205 kilowatts of DC charging at a high power charging station, which, if you have a battery charge of at least 10%, allows 97 miles of range to be added in just 10 minutes, while a 10 to 80% charge is possible in 30 minutes. Back at home, you can set up your charging regime using the BMW app or with the provided widget sections on the centre display. AC charging is possible at a rate of up to 11 kilowatts and optionally up to 22 kilowatts, a standard feature on this M60 model. Hooked up to a 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box, a full charge would need around 13 hours and at an average electricity rate of 30 pence per kilowatt hour would set you back around 20 pounds. Doing the same thing using a public rapid charger, the cost would be more like 55 pounds. For the first time on a BMW EV, with the i5 it's possible to store customised charging settings for multiple individual charging points, which will then be automatically used the next time the car returns to a charging point stored in the car's memory. In addition, the battery will be preheated on approach to a high power charging station, something you can do manually if the car's navigation route guidance function hasn't been activated. Thanks to improved charging software, that cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system also helps to further enhance this iFi's performance on long journeys. For instance, a charging optimised route is calculated as soon as the destination has been entered, should the vehicle's current range not be enough to reach the destination. Live data is processed during the journey, allowing charging stations to be automatically added to the itinerary if any of the stations originally planned for charging stops no longer have any availability. By default, the drive system is set to ensure that the vehicle reaches both the final destination and the charging stops with a charge level of at least 10%. The BMW charging package comes as standard on the i5, which gives owners attractive kilowatt hour tariffs for AC and DC charging throughout the UK and Europe. The high power charging network run by the BMW Group's joint venture, Ionity, also forms part of the BMW charging network. Almost 16,000 charging points are included in the UK and Ireland, while the monthly fee for BMW charging and Ionity is waived for the first 12 months for all retail customers. On delivery of your i5, you'll be given a BMW charging card which entitles you to special tariffs operated by the BMW charging network, which in turn connects you into one of the world's largest public charging networks, all of it accessible using just that RFID card or, if you prefer, a provided app. In this country, you'll be able to use charge points operated by BP Pulse, ESB, Osprey, Source London, Chargepoint Network UK and others. 
high power charging stations via the Ionity network are also part of the BMW charging network. At the time of this test combined, this gave i5 drivers access to over 8,500 AC and 1,500 DC charging points across the UK, plus a further 162,000 AC and 11,000 DC charging points across Europe. Both i5 models are supplied complete with a flexible fast charger and a Mode 3 charging cable for use at public charging stations. Annoyingly though, you'll have to pay extra for a charging cable for a domestic socket. What else? Well, with an i5, there are of course all the usual electric car benefits. Taxation is at the lowest rates around, based on the zero tailpipe emissions concept. Though of course there are emissions linked to the car's production and likely energy used. VED or car tax is set at zero for electric cars and company car tax is the lowest rate at 2% BIK with both of these figures as well as free entry to London's ULES and congestion charge zones applicable until 2025. When it comes to insurance, the i5e Drive 40 model is rated at Group 43 and this M60 at Group 49. That's high, but better than the top of the shop Group 50 rating applied to all versions of the rival Mercedes EQE. It really is about time the insurance industry got on board with the EV revolution instead of continually doing its best to hold it back. As for the combustion 5 Series models, the 520i S Drive is rated at Group 35. The 530E is rated at Group 39 and the 550E is rated at Group 44. Residual values sit somewhere between Audi and Mercedes, rated at around 45% after three years and 36,000 miles. As for servicing intervals, well, like other BMWs, this one has condition-based servicing, which uses sensors and special algorithms to individually calculate the condition of the most important wear parts, like the brakes and the car's operating fluids. Condition-based servicing also monitors the time and mileage-dependent scope of any needed maintenance work. In this i5, servicing should be less expensive than for a combustion engine 5 Series model. This electric version does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. And thanks to the recuperation management system and this model's very limited use of friction braking, you'll hardly ever have to replace the brake pads. The brand reckons every six years should be sufficient. As usual, prepaid servicing packages are available. And on all fives, there's BMW's usual three-year unlimited mileage warranty. In the PHEVs, the battery pack has its own six-year or 100,000 mile warranty. And this i5 model's battery pack has an eight-year or 100,000 mile warranty that guarantees battery performance though not to 100%. Finally, a few words about this 5 Series model's production eco-friendliness. This car's German Dingolfing factory is carbon neutral, and BMW reckons that utilising green electricity for battery cell production and making increased use of secondary raw materials cuts CO2 emissions by around 20%. This G60 5 Series makes a significant contribution to achieving the company's ambitious climate goals by reducing the carbon footprint in the supply chain by 20 to 25% and by up to 58% across the entire life cycle compared to its predecessor. All good to know. The 5 Series is BMW's oldest nameplate a model that predates the current industry obsession with SUVs and will probably outlast it. Though it's true that you might prefer the cosseting luxury of a Mercedes E-Class or perhaps the cool, understated vibe of an Audi A6 or those cars EQE or e-tron EV equivalents, it's also difficult to deny that now, more than ever before, this BMW provides much of what you get from those two rivals in a package that's slightly more purposeful, both visually and dynamically. There's premium pricing, of course, but that also applies to the latest versions of key prestige-badged rivals. At least with this BMW, you feel that money's buying you a car that showcases the current state of the automotive art. Whether you prioritise clever gadgetry, high-tech engineering or sharp running costs in your full-sized executive car, this BMW operates from an agenda that will certainly impress. 
In some ways, there's nothing groundbreaking with this G60 design, but it does go a long way towards resetting the current class standard. Whether far enough to justify the considerable prices now being asked is another question, but the similarly priced rivals from Mercedes and Audi have to answer that too. We're impressed that heavier electrified technology has diluted so little of this five model's driving appeal. But this isn't a class leader when it comes to ride comfort, and not all of the digital cabin tech is an improvement over what went before. And in summary, well, though much is different here, much is also as it always was. Over five decades, the question facing customers in the segment for full-sized executive cars has often less been why they should choose a five, but why they shouldn't. And it still is. By a small but significant margin, this Munich maker still sets the class standard.